My name is Mutlo Penny Jackson Marakalala. I'm a senior lecturer at the University of Cape Town and also an adjunct, a visiting scientist at Harvard School of Public Health. I'm interested in infectious diseases with a focus on TB, which is highly endemic in sub-Saharan Africa. And it's because of severe effects of this disease, especially growing up during the times when actually HIV, AIDS, uh, harsh effects were visible to every young African. So I thought I wanted to choose a career that aligns very well with the challenges that were currently or were endemic at the time. So my choice is connected to solutions to Africa's specific challenges. Well, um, um, at the moment, um, broadly, I'm interested in developing therapeutic and diagnostic tools that we can use to combat infectious diseases, as I mentioned. But particularly, I'm interested actually in developing what we call host-directed therapies against tuberculosis. Well, the impact, um, so, so at the moment, as you know, like we have a lot of people actually uh, who are latently infected with TB. We're having a lot of patients who are treatment refractory who don't respond very well to current therapies and also a problem of resistance against the disease. And as I mentioned, the increasing in immunocompromised individuals means t disease like TB that are opportunistic would come up. So there's a better need for better therapies actually to bridge the gaps that exist in our current treatment protocols. So actually, this already has an impactful sort of potential. We already have a potential impact in eradicating diseases, like according to, to World Health Organization and our global Millennium Global Goals, we actually want to eradicate TB by 2050. And eradicate other diseases within our lifetime is really something that is impactful and I want to be part of by doing this particular research. That's an exciting thing, precision medicine, of which host director therapy is really linked to in the context of personalized medicine. It's really an exciting idea that Africa, I think, is ready to embrace by integrating into our curriculums, by training our healthcare givers and making our patients understand that process. But moreover, we also need facilities to really make sure that for each individual, they actually have a tailor-made treatment and so on. Africa is ready, we have resources here and our challenges. We just really need a cooperation in terms of governments and funders and then people on the ground. So I think this is the right time, it's exciting time for Africa to really, to really explore solutions to our own home-based challenges done by scientists in this area. And this is just one of that uh, exciting scientific areas. I believe that actually our universities in terms of our cap capacity to transfer knowledge are advanced. We can match anyone in the world, but you need resources that are encouraging. You need exposure earlier to high tech, um, like cutting edge technologies that are offered in busy environment, as you mentioned, like Harvard and so on. And I believe that any capable or any talented young scientist from Africa, given an opportunity, they can make it anywhere, including Harvard. But it's high time that we have resources from Harvard being available on our shores here, and, and, and that's the way to go. But, but I believe, yes, um, it's, there's no surrogate. On, uh, honestly speaking, it's important to also get, get out of your comfort space where you grew up and actually get to multiple universities as possible, or maybe countries to know how to integrate into diversity. Science alone is not just narrow, but it's understanding dynamics of actually a global world we live in with challenges actually all over the world and actually get engaged at that level. So as much as I, I, I encourage people to move over, but I also think a person here who is homegrown and actually has a desire alone to drive home-based solutions is equally skilled to match anyone in the whole world. I mean, the desire of every person at my level is to know how to transfer the same passion to a younger person to really come and join us in addressing these challenges. But looking in the context of Africa, having a young person going all the way to PhD levels and also going to postdocs and knowing our socioeconomic status, where you also want to go back and help parents and help younger brothers is quite a challenging situation that without proper motiv motivation and actually proper investment from universities and from governments and from you know, NGOs, whatever, into this area and actually encouraging younger scientists beyond beyond just their original passion. I think more needs to be done. I think we need so much more of role modeling, championing, 
and also going out and making science look fashionable as a career that's not dull, where actually younger scientists themselves can get engaged in, in public dialogues to know how they can shape, you know, how governments work, mm -hmm. how our futures are shaped actually around our challenges, like in my case, infectious diseases. So being able to know that you're doing something good and that good thing is actually taken seriously from the top, it's really, really rewarding. Because the first situation, the first point we are in science, for instance, is to really connect ourselves to societal impact. As I mentioned, in my area, we want to really eradicate these diseases. But if they are not actually reaching to policymakers, to governments and so on, and it's useless. So we need to be sure that our knowledge generating processes are taken seriously and are embraced by governments. It would be one of the first things, perhaps. Second thing, we need support in terms of infrastructure, in terms of nurturing the talent. When you identify talent at lower level, make sure that, as you mentioned at some point, that actually some talent is lost along the way. So we really need to really nurture that and make sure that it's protected talent that eventually serve us. So how that is done is by investing actually in the process of training, support networks and so on, but also not science alone. Like there are people who are really innovative, they have great ideas. So we really have to promote people to, people to really think and to put whatever is in their mind in the test tube and test those things out and make commercializable, industrialable thing. Well, we also need um, not recognition per se, like NEF, for example, is a body that, for instance, you identify people with talent and you create a network where actually people are in the same space, at the same level of some sort with new ideas. And to have this kind of collegiality where you actually share ideas and have actually a system where there's a, something that's between governments, it's between your science, but it's a network of some sort. I don't know how to describe this layer, but having this actually is more key of a recognition of a specific younger scientist doing something and they know they are part of some system that allows them to connect to government and also have their work, I don't know, it's their work having relevance to, to, to Africa broadly. So that itself, actually, from my experience as a NERF fellow, I've, I've been to World Economic Forum, being a scientist in infectious diseases. I've attended some funding sort of scheme strategies. So I've given talks that are related to policies beyond my disease of, in, of, 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 interest, um, of specific research. So that alone, I found it so more empowering that I can talk to a prime minister now and I can tell them of the problems and what they need to do. That itself came from a network like NERV where I was able to really know how my work can connect to impact at the top level.